What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Happy New Year. Hope you're doing well, feeling great and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day and a great year to have a great year. Today I wanted to talk about how to be your own bank in 2023 with silver, gold, copper, cash, credit, and stocks. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel. Try out some G Fuel Energy Formula, $5 off your first order by clicking the link in the description. And of course, make sure to go and get your up to 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. For every friend you refer, they're going to give you 15 free fractional shares of some of the most rock solid companies on the planet. And until January 4th, every referral you make gets you an entry to the New Year prize board, which means you have a chance of winning some free shares of Google. Everything will be linked in the description. All right, so today I wanted to talk about how to be your own bank in 2023 with, of course, silver, gold, copper, cash, credit, and stocks. And I figured it was probably best to start out with cash. And I'm gonna be breaking this video up into chapters, so you can click on that little timeline thing at the bottom of the video to see what part you want to listen to, or you could just watch the whole video, which is what I would obviously recommend, because I'm gonna be going over everything. So let's start out with cash. Cash is something that you absolutely need to have in the event of an emergency. You're gonna to wanna to have a couple months worth of cash. A lot of people recommend one to three months worth of expenses packed away wherever you feel is the most safe, in a savings account, in a checking account, buried in the backyard, locked away in a safe, tucked under the bed, wherever you believe is the safest place to store cash, one thing, remains the same. And that's that you gotta have cash. You have to have a little bit of cash. You need to have a couple months worth of cash. I would recommend three to six months. I don't think anything beyond that is necessary. Of course, in the event of a seven month long emergency, yeah, your six month emergency fund won't last you that long, but hopefully you'll be able to get things sorted out before it gets to that point. But you need to have some cash for the short term. I personally do not believe in cash for the long term. I don't believe in saving cash years, decades to come, but I do believe in having a little bit of cash tucked away in the event of an emergency. Because a lot of people, they like to invest their cash, which is definitely better than saving cash. A lot of people like to convert their cash into silver or gold or another type of asset, which in my opinion is a far smarter thing to do than to save cash. But I don't want to be in a situation where I have to sell something just to access the cash. I think the cash should already be accessible. I think the cash should already be there for you, whether it's in the bank or whether it's in your possession somewhere, somehow, you gotta have some cash. I would say that if you're stacking or if you care about personal finance or if you're investing or whatever the case may be, whatever you are, whatever it is that you're doing, if you're lacking a cash position, I think you are shooting yourself in the foot and I think you are setting yourself up for failure. Yes, it hurts my soul to hang on to cash because it depreciates in value and I could be investing it or stacking it or doing something else with it and creating value and building wealth for myself with said cash. So it hurts my soul to not do that with the amount of cash that I have, but I understand the importance of having some cash. That's rule number one, have some cash. Moving away from cash, I wanna talk a little bit about credit. And I'm gonna make this as quick as I can because I know a lot of people don't care too much about credit, but guess what? It goes beyond credit. It goes beyond building your credit and having that 800 credit score. And, 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 and. It goes beyond all that. Those are just bragging rights, sure, yeah. Bare minimum interest rates are always great, which is why I recommend having good credit or should I say excellent credit, I would recommend building your credit. Having a good credit score is never going to hurt you and it's never gonna cost you any money to have that score, but it goes beyond that. When it comes to being your own bank, you not only want to 
have as much money as you can. You not only want to make as much money as you can, but you also want to save as much money as you can, which is what the credit cards can do for you. My personal favorite type of credit card is a cashback credit card. Now, I wouldn't recommend people do exactly what I did because a lot of people might see what I do and say that's a little bit ridiculous. I have six different credit cards at the moment, and I'm open-minded to getting a seventh or even an eighth or a ninth credit card later down the road, but right now I'm happy with the six that I have. And of the six that I have, there are two that I would really recommend, and I will leave referral links in the description in case you want to apply for either of the cards. The first one is this green one right here. It's the Discover It Cashback card. And the cool thing about this card is it has rotating quarterly categories, which means it gives you 5% cash back on something different every three months. So the first quarter of the year, AKA where we are right now, January through the end of March, you're gonna be getting 5% cash back at grocery stores. And you're also gonna be getting 5% cash back at drug stores and select streaming services. The big one of those three, I would say, Grocery stores, you can get 5% back on up to $1,500 spent at the grocery store. This is something that you need to do anything. Anyway, you're, you're going to have to buy groceries. You're going and, and buying food every week or every two weeks anyway. Why not get 5% back if you already have the card? But here's the trick. If you do not have the card and you apply for it and get accepted for it, which by the way, shouldn't be an issue because this is considered a starter credit card. This one right here, this is something that a lot of people use as their very first credit card ever. So you don't need to have incredible credit to be approved for this card. It's actually very, very simple to get this card. But if it's your first year with the card, they match all the cash back that you get at the end of your first year, which means that 5% cash back that you're getting on groceries, it's technically 10% on up to $1,500 per quarter. So if you max that out, you max out that opportunity, $1,500 spent on groceries, which is what a lot of us do anyway. I personally don't need to buy that much in groceries, so you better believe I'll be buying grocery store gift cards as well. That's $150. $75 for me, because I've had this card for more than a year. But if it's your first year with the card, that's $150 back on something that you need to buy anyway. And then moving on into April, May, and June, it's going to be a different category. It's going to be something different. It might be gas stations. It might be restaurants. It might be Amazon or eBay purchases. It changes every three months. And they'll let us know soon what those other categories are going to be. But the quarter that we're in right now, the beginning of January 2023, grocery stores, drug stores, and select streaming services. So if you're paying for these things anyway, you might as well save five to 10%. If you wanna check out this card or read a little bit more about it, I will leave a referral link in the description. The other credit card I would recommend for 2023 would be the Capital One Saver One card. No annual fee for either of these cards, by the way, they're free to own. And this one offers you 3% back at grocery stores year round. It's not a quarterly category thing year round 3% back at the grocery store 3% back dining and entertainment so dining first and foremost this goes for obviously sitting down in a restaurant it also goes for takeout it also goes for getting food delivered to your house you order a pizza 3% back it also goes for the drive through at a fast food restaurant 3% back and then when it comes to entertainment, this goes for pretty much anything under the umbrella of entertainment. Movie tickets, going to a baseball game, going to a concert, going bowling, whatever the case may be, 3% back on pretty much anything under the umbrella of entertainment. And 3% back on popular streaming services as well. Which means, this is what I like to call the date night card. When I whip out this bad boy right here, Mrs. DYDSS, who, by the way, you can follow on Instagram at Mrs. DYDSS, and you can follow me on Instagram at Mikey DYDSS. But Mrs. DYDSS, this is her favorite credit card that I own because she knows when I whip out this bad boy, we're probably about to sit down and eat some pizza. 
This credit card gives you a $200 bonus just for signing up. If you sign up and spend $500 in your first three months, which is not hard to do, just go grocery shopping or pay rent or pay car insurance or go to the strip club, you know, the essentials. $500 in your first 90 days, they will give you $200 just for doing so, which means the $500 that you spent is really only $300 spent. It's a $200 discount on something that you're paying that costs $500. Link in the description in case you're interested in this card. Part of being your own bank in 2023 includes not only building credit and getting yourself to a position where you are saving money when it comes to interest, but it's also about saving money and racking up all that cash back. All that cash back, all that money that you save on things that you are required to pay for anyway. Groceries, rent, your phone bill, whatever take all that cash back and put it into something that'll create value for you maybe silver and gold maybe invest it in the stock market maybe add it to your savings maybe you're saving up for a car or, or a house or, or whatever or just spend it on more stuff that you need like more groceries if that's what you want it's whatever you want to do or just transfer it to your checking account and withdraw it as cash. You can do that as well. It's for you. Discover It Cashback Card and Capital One Saver One Card will both be linked in the description if you want to use my referral links. They're there for you. Moving away from credit, I also wanted to talk very quickly about stocks. And then after this, we're going to get into the precious metals and also the industrial metals. So when it comes to stocks, this is something that I personally believe everybody should be involved with. I don't think everybody needs to be investing their life savings. I don't think everybody needs to turn themselves into this big hardcore investor, but I personally believe that everyone should be investing in the markets. And when I say the markets, I'm talking about broad market index funds. I don't think you can go wrong with broad market index funds, whether it be the S&P 500, which is a collection of stocks. It's, it's actually 500 stocks in one. The 500 biggest, baddest, best performing companies, publicly traded companies in the United States. Or you can go for an index fund that tracks all the publicly traded stocks in the United States. Or you can go for one that tracks all the publicly traded stocks throughout the world. Or you can go for a bond market index fund. Or you can go for an international market index fund. Or you can go for a tech-specific index fund or a utilities sector-specific index fund. There's an index fund for everything. Rather than trying to find the needle in the haystack and saying, oh, I think this particular stock, oh, I think this one particular specific company is going to do very well, and maybe they will do very well. Maybe they have a world-changing product and or service and or experience that is inevitably going to go up in value. Sure, great, fantastic. Nothing can get in its way, right? Wrong. Management can get in its way. You can have a revolutionary company with a revolutionary product service experience. It could be a revolutionary life-changing stock that gets screwed up by the CEO or the CFO or the COO, or whoever. So rather than trying to find the needle in the haystack, in my opinion, I think you should just buy the haystack, AKA the index fund. If you wanna buy Apple stock, for example, you can do that if you want, or you can just buy into the S&P 500, because guess what makes up a good portion of the S&P 500? Apple, and Amazon, and Google, and Tesla, and everything that you know and everything that you use. Are you wearing Nikes today? Nike stock is in there, it's in the index funds. Oh, you're not wearing Nike, maybe you're wearing Adidas. Guess what, Adidas is in there too. Did you brush your teeth today? Guess what, Colgate is in there as well. Have you ever driven past a construction site? Guess what, Caterpillar's in there. What car did you use to drive past that construction site? Was it Ford? Was it Toyota? Guess what? Those are in there too. Everything you use, everything you know, everything you love, and everything that you already pay money for anyway 
if they're a publicly traded stock, they're in these index funds. So in my opinion, if you're already using it, if you're already spending money on it, and if it's already a company that you believe in, it's probably in these index funds, in which case, why not invest in these index funds? The S&P 500, for example, an average annual return of seven to eight percent, and that's with dividends reinvested, adjusted for inflation, seven to eight percent. You're gonna have some better years, you're gonna have some worse years, you're gonna see red certain years, you're gonna see double digit returns other years, but on average, seven to eight percent adjusted for inflation with dividends reinvested, seven to eight percent. Not bad. And like I said in the intro of the video, one way you can get started by doing this is on Weeble. You can use any stock trading app that you want. The one that I use, or one of the ones that I use, is Weeble. And reminder, you can get up to 12 free fractional shares just by downloading Weeble and funding your account. And for every friend you refer, they're going to give you 15 free fractional shares of some of the most rock-solid companies on the planet. Ford, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, Apple, the list goes on. And for the next three and a half days, for every friend you refer, till January 4th, they're going to give you an entry to the New Year prize board, which means they're going to be taking all the people that made referrals through December 1st through January 4th. They're going to be picking some random people, and those random people are going to be getting some free Google stock. Link in the description, and on Weeble, you can also create yourself a Roth IRA if you choose to. So moving away from stocks, moving away from the stock market and index funds and, and all that. Now let's talk about the metals. Let's talk about the silver. Let's talk about the gold. Let's talk about the copper. Now copper might sound pretty strange. A lot of people in the stacking world, the precious metal world, are like, copper? That's not a precious metal. Correct. It's not a precious metal. It's an industrial metal. And what's funny about copper is I haven't seen a whole lot of videos on YouTube about copper, but whenever I put out a video in the past talking about copper and reasons you might want to consider stacking it, I would get comments from people saying something along the lines of, oh, it's not a precious metal, it's, it's you know, nobody believes it's going to skyrocket in value, blah, 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 blah. And I would always say to these people, I was like, you are absolutely right, but it stands a far better chance than cash long term. And every single person I would have this miniature debate with would turn around and be like, eh, you know what, <laughs> you're absolutely right. So stacking copper is not something that I would necessarily recommend, especially not in large quantities, because copper is so absurdly cheap. In order to have an amount of copper that's worth anything substantial, you're going to need probably an entire bedroom of the house packed with copper from the floor up to the ceiling, wall to wall. But you can actually stack copper for free, which is what I would recommend you do. I would not recommend you go out of your way and buy a copper round or a bar, unless it's something cool, something that looks nice, and you're like, hey, that'd be pretty fun to have. Sure, nothing wrong with that. But for stacking copper for weight, I don't think you should have all that much copper, but if you go through your pocket change, you see these copper pennies over here? Or these pennies, I should say? These are copper pennies, which means anything pre-1982. This one happens to be a 77. I don't know if that'll focus. This is a 1977, which means it is 95% copper and 5% zinc. But with it being 95% copper, pre-1982, by the way, and in the year 1982, if you find an 82 penny, you have probably a 50-50 chance on whether or not it's copper or not, because that's the year that they moved away from copper. But you can weigh it and make sure. But anything pre-1982 is, for a fact, 95% copper. And if memory serves me right, I think it takes nine copper pennies to equate to an ounce of copper. That's an ounce of copper, not a troy ounce of copper. Copper is weighed in ounces because it's not a precious metal. Precious metals are weighed in troy ounces. It's weird. It's confusing. It's ridiculous, but that's just the way it is. Copper and industrial metal weighed in ounces, not troy ounces. And it takes, I believe, nine copper pennies to equate to one ounce of copper. So if you have nine right there, like what I have on screen, that's an ounce of copper, which is worth almost nothing, but it's almost like wealth preservation on a micro, micro level. And like I said before, 
it stands a better cash. It stands a better chance than cash, I should say. So moving away from copper, one way you can go about preserving wealth on a micro level, which one more time, let me reiterate, I would not recommend focusing on copper really at all. The way you should go about stacking copper, if you choose to, is just by simply looking through your pocket change and if you find a pre-82 penny, set it aside. I wouldn't invest any time in hunting for them necessarily. I wouldn't go out of your way looking for them. And I definitely wouldn't recommend trading your cash for bars of copper or copper rounds or anything like that. The premiums on copper are through the roof. You're gonna be paying way more than what's necessary. So I always recommend stacking copper for free on the side, casually, not even intentionally. If you stumble upon one, set it aside. Moving away from copper. Let's talk about silver and gold. These kind of go hand in hand, obviously. And if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I've posted a video or two about silver and gold. But one way you can go about being your own bank is by stacking up the real, true, honest money. Silver and gold are not only internationally recognized as money, they're not only constitutionally recognized as money, but they are also biblically recognized as money. Silver and gold have been money for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. They've always been seen as money. They've always been used as money. They've always been looked at as money. And they always will be considered money. Real, true, honest money. Before the government-backed, glorified IOU debt note dollar bills, aka that man-made invention, backed by silver and gold, by the way, our coins were backed by silver and gold, and our dollar bills, we were on the gold standard. Neither, neither one of those are still true. Our coins had the silver removed from them, the pre-65 quarters, dimes, and half dollars. They're all just miscellaneous metals now. They are no longer 90% silver. And our dollar bills were no longer on the gold standard. So our fake fiat currency, no longer backed by real, true, honest money. And that's because the value of real, true, honest money began to exceed what face value claimed that it was worth. So all of a sudden, the money started becoming worth more than the currency, which you could argue always, always was the case, but it started to be highlighted. It started to be showcased that silver and gold are not only more valuable, but more important and have real, real value. All the different ways that silver and gold are used in all these different industries. Silver, for example, has over 10,000 different jobs. It's the most reflective metal in existence. It's the greatest conductor of both heat and electricity. Silver and gold, they're used in jewelry. They're used in electronics. They're used in cars, batteries. The list goes on. Silver and gold have intrinsic value. So by stacking a little bit of silver and gold on the side, like I said before about stocks and that you don't necessarily need to become a hardcore investor, when it comes to silver and gold, you in no way, shape, or form need to become a hardcore stacker. You could do it on the side. It could just be like a little hobby. That's where I'm at at this point. I'll pick up a little bit of silver every here and there. From time to time, I'll pick up a little bit of gold as well. The beautiful yellow metal. Now, I believe if you're going to stack one, you should be stacking both. Silver and gold, they have their pros and cons. They're different metals, by the way, obviously. But I say that in case there's a new person out there who thinks that silver is just a cheaper white version of gold and gold is just a more expensive yellow version of silver. No, absolutely not the case. They are completely different metals. They're used in similar ways in some of the same industries, but they're also used in completely different ways as well. They weigh differently. That's why if you take a one troy ounce pure silver 
coin and compare it to a one troy ounce pure gold coin, you'll notice that the gold coin is actually a little bit smaller. Not by a whole lot, but noticeably smaller, but they weigh the same. You know how they say what's heavier, a pound of rocks or a pound of feathers? It's gonna take a whole lot more feathers to weigh a pound than rocks. But guess what? They both weigh a pound. Well, guess what? An ounce of silver, or a troy ounce of silver and a troy ounce of gold, they both weigh a troy ounce. It just takes more of one to reach that weight than the other, but they're still a troy ounce, either way. So they're different metals, they weigh different amounts, they have different melting points, they're completely different metals, and they're used in different ways as well. But they do have their pros and their cons. Silver is much more volatile, much more sporadic, especially when it comes to short term. It falls harder than gold does, but it also jumps up higher than gold does. Gold's a little bit more stable, a little bit more reliable, and when it comes to the wealthiest of the wealthy, <laughs> they prefer gold for sure. For that reason, it's often looked at as a safe haven. Silver, I would definitely say, stands a far better chance than cash. But due to its crazy ups and downs, roller coasters, which gold experiences as well, but percentage-wise, gold does not typically fall as hard as silver does, and it obviously doesn't jump up as high as silver does a lot of the time. Meanwhile, on the other hand, because you might be listening to those words right there and be like, oh, okay, so in other words, gold is just better than silver. In that way, yeah, but when it comes to the opportunity that comes along with the metals, like I said, silver typically falls harder, but it also jumps up higher. You can see much more impressive gains in silver, potentially, if you're paying attention to the spot price like that. So there are pros and cons to both. And I personally believe that if you're stacking both of them, the pros of each cancel out the cons of the opposite. I think you're getting the best of both worlds by stacking both of them. I think you are balanced if you're stacking both of them. Now you might be wondering, should you go 50-50 when it comes to silver and gold if you have Let's just say $1,000, should you put 500 into silver, 500 into gold? Not necessarily. I think you need to weigh out the pros and the cons, and I think you need to figure out which one makes the most sense. Because another thing you gotta factor in is the fact that silver, being that it's so much cheaper, it's in the 20s per troy ounce, while gold is 16, 17, dollars per troy ounce. $500 into gold takes up way less space than $500 worth of silver. For example, if you were to take $500 and put it into silver, that would be 20 troy ounces, 20 of these little coins right here. It would take 20 of them, which obviously doesn't take up all that much space, but $500 in gold can get you this little quarter ounce gold coin right there. It's $500 in each metal, just because you're getting more silver out of it doesn't mean anything necessarily. Unless, of course, you have more confidence in silver at this time. Then yeah, you're probably going to want to get more silver. But if you're looking for something that takes up far less space and still holds the same amount of value and offers you more stability during the rocky times, then maybe you want to get that little gold coin. It's $500 either way. Neither one's better or worse. You just have to figure out which one makes more sense to you. So you don't have to go 50-50. If you have $1,000, you don't have to go 500 and 500. You can go 90% into silver and 90% into gold or, or vice versa. It really doesn't matter. It really comes down to what makes the most sense to you. What makes the most sense for you, your family, and your future and your finances. I don't believe there's a right or wrong answer. But I do believe 
If you're stacking one, you should be stacking the other as well. So coming around full circle, this is how to be your own bank in 2023 with silver, gold, copper, cash, credit, and stocks. I said it before and I'll say it again. You don't want to just have as much money as possible. You don't want to just make as much money as possible. You want to save as much money as possible as well. And you can do these three things with what I talked about in this video. You can have as much money as possible by stacking the silver and gold. You can make as much money as possible by investing in the stock market and seeing that average annual rate of return of 7 to 8% adjusted for inflation with dividends reinvested. And you can save as much money as possible as well by using cash back credit cards, which simultaneously builds your credit and gives you far lower interest rates when it comes to a big purchase or, or something that you plan on financing in the future, like a house, for example, or a car, for example, lower interest rates just by having higher credit and tons and tons and tons of cash back. So like I said before, if you want to try out Either of these credit cards, the Discover It cashback card gives you 5% cashback on rotating quarterly categories, 10% if it's your first year with the card. Link in the description. The Capital One Saver one gives you 3% cashback year-round on groceries, dining and entertainment, and popular streaming services. $200 bonus if you get the card and spend $500 in your first 90 days. That will be linked in the description as well. But I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to being your own bank in 2023, is this something that you want to take seriously this year? Is this something that you are deciding for yourself? Maybe as a New Year's resolution or, or maybe something you just want to continue from something that you'd been doing the previous years. Do you want to be your own bank this year? Do things on your own terms. Bank on your own terms. Have your own money in your own possession. Making money the way that you want to make money. Saving money the way that you want to save money. And just giving the middle finger to Wells Fargo and, and, and Chase and, and, and all the banks out there. Instead of giving them an interest-free loan. Doing things on your own terms which takes a little bit more work, we get a whole lot more reward out of it. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. If you guys like today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. Try out some G Fuel Energy Formula, $5 off your first order by clicking the link in the description, over 50 different flavors to choose from. And of course, make sure to go and get your up to 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. You could deposit as little as you'd like, even as little as a penny. It still works, it still counts, you still get your up to 12 free fractional shares. For every friend you refer, they're gonna give you 15 free fractional shares of some of the most rock solid companies on the planet, Ford, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, Apple, the list goes on. And for every friend you refer, for the next three and a half days, Weeble's gonna give you an entry to the New Year prize board, which means they're gonna be taking all the people that made referrals from December 1st to January 4th, taking some random people from that list that made referrals, and they're gonna be giving those people some free shares of Google. Don't pass up on an opportunity. Weeble link in the description credit card referral links in the description. I benefit if you use them as well, but you benefit if you use them as well. If you don't use a referral link, you might not get those bonuses. So they're there for you. The resources are there. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again, when it comes to being your own bank with silver, gold, copper, cash, credit, and stocks, how are you going about being your own bank this year? How do you plan on being your own bank in 2023? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.